What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Mission Control, a podcast focusing on executive directors and how they strive to make positive impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul Schmidt, owner and creative video strategist for Community News Multimedia. And I would love to welcome to the show, Eric Larson, executive director of Impression 5 Science Center. Hi, Eric. How are you doing today? I'm great, Paul. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I don't know if you've caught this before you you caught my message to you how we start out with each uh each podcast is tell us about your mission that you control <laughs> the mission um that i have the privilege of of trying to control <laughs> or to uh, push <laughs> forward um is here at impression five science center um which is you know the the focus of the science center is trying to create and engage families in stem focused uh, experiences that allow families to play with science together, to create new ideas uh, through science together, and to challenge their understanding of the world that they live in. Um, We do that by creating an interactive space that allows them to explore STEM or science content through exhibits. And then we also supplement that with a pretty robust offering of amazing educational programs for children as young as three and as old as 14. Now, with the, with the the terminology STEM, now you've been at Impression 5 for quite a while. Um, so the, the terminology that's, that's geared towards what is known as STEM, what, what was it typically called like when you first started? <laughs> it's a great question. Um, I think we we always go through life and you, you get to learn more and more acronyms, right? And so it's, uh, you know, STEM is obviously science, technology, engineering, and math. I've been at the Science Center for, uh, started as a volunteer when I was 14, uh, been here in a working capacity for 28 years. Um, and when I first started here, Impression 5 was known as Impression 5 Museum. They made the shift to Impression 5 Science Center later in their lifetime or lifespan, if you will, because it oper- it provided different funding opportunities from different go- government organizations that were holistically focused on science, for example, like National Science Foundation. And so by no means do we believe in Impression 5 that STEM is the only thing that is important for um, education and for connection in the community. We also believe that art is a massive part of this. But the essence of Impression 5 is engaging people in science. And so as we have evolved through the programming that we've developed for the last two decades, there's been a lot of effort, of course, through informal and formal education to strengthen the opportunities for students within science, technology, engineering, and math. And much of our programming has mimicked that or in some cases led the way in that as people are specific specifically education folks that are focused on the evolution of education and learning the value of of what informal experiences can provide in a child's understanding of a certain content. So as opposed to the more traditional kind of didactic approach of one person owning the knowledge, telling somebody else about it, and all of a sudden they become knowledgeable at that, Impression 5 really takes the... um, the control is in the learner and the control and the interest that they have in exploring a certain content area is important for their intrinsic value in that. So understanding that the construction of that framework of knowledge or their framework of understanding is really driven by themselves and what they are completely interested in. And so as we think about what that means for the future learnings, learning styles of youth and as we grow on and hopefully become lifelong learners is, is where can we tear down as many barriers to, to people engaging in the work that is necessary to learn. And so our standpoint from that, stand, from that essence is to make sure that we're creating really meaningful interactive experiences where, um, where people can engage and ask questions and use kind of an inquiry based approach um, where it's okay if you don't have the answer. Um, and it's okay if it, do, if it takes some time for you to figure that out that answer. That's essentially the process of science. And so that, 
that the terminology has changed and some of maybe the tactics that Impression 5 is using have changed. But in essence, we're still trying to do what the organization was started to do um, in 1972. Wow. That's, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty technical. <laughs> well, I think that, you know, it is, you know, a lot of people may look at a place like Impression 5 and think about, you know, wow, that's a really great place to go. It's a fun place to go. My kids love it there. Um, and we are absolutely trying to create an environment that fosters that. But it, it's, we go much deeper than that. The things that we're doing here are intentional. Um, everything from how we design and build our own exhibits to the exhibits that we choose to bring in from other communities to the educational programs and curriculum that we write for those programs, all the way down to the things that we choose to put in our Impression 5 to go science store. Though all of those things are carefully curated to try and achieve the same goal, which is to, to inspire uh, youth and with their caregivers, inspire families uh, to engage in this type of scientific experiments. Now, you mentioned not too long ago, when I say that, about all of like four minutes ago, that Impression 5 was considered a museum. Is it still considered a museum? So I think that's a great question because I think the connotation of the word museum means um, it's different in what it means to folks. Um, maybe the traditional uh, definition of a museum is uh, focused on stewardship and, and archives, um, a stewardship of a collection that needs to be protected and is used to tell a story or to engage people in learning about history or natural science or, or whatever the content area may be. And um, when Impression 5 made the shift to no longer call itself a museum, not only did that open up some other funding options that they were pursuing at the time, but it also helped strip away that, um, that traditional understanding of what the word museum meant. And so, being that we were a science center, um, we wanted to make sure that people knew or had the expectation when they came to a place like Impression 5 that it's interactive. It's built for you to play with it. It's built for you to manipulate it. It's built for you to engage maybe differently than you would engage in a more traditional museum environment, which, and I'm not saying either one has more or less value than the other. They're just different. And the way that people engage in um, a collection of artifacts that have to be protected and, and that stewardship is different than they would engage in a collection of exhibits that were built for you to manipulate and pound on and and do all the things that happen in impression five well that that's what's interesting is like is there any aspect of what you're doing today that harkens back to your uh, past as as a museum or have you completely shifted that whole role to be the science center that you are in that focus yeah so impression five was initially you know initially designed by marilyn eichinger who opened it in 72 as an interactive place to explore um and so i think i think what i've learned in my you know short time in impression five is we now we we celebrate 50 years which is an incredible threshold in, in my 28 here, what I've learned is that, you know, outside of a collection um, at a traditional museum or a collection of exhibits, interactive exhibits at a place like Impression 5, museums are community centers. Um, museums are, are places that people choose to gather. And sometimes those choices are driven by very different things and not necessarily always driven by an exhibit that may be there or a collection of things that may be there, whether that be art or, you know, physical items. And, and quite often people make decisions to visit cultural organizations because of the experience they have there, not necessarily just because of a specific show or exhibition um, or interactive exhibit. And so we actually did a really robust uh, survey project pre-pandemic a number of years ago that really shed some light on this it, it specifically for our target target audience which are people that have children living with them or they're connected to that are basically from birth to 14 and it really provided some insight into why people are choosing to go to places like impression five um and I, and i and i think about that as as bigger than just impression five but 
you know, where are the community centers within our community? Where do people choose to gather? And specifically in our industry, where are people choosing that have children choosing to gather? And, and they're going to places like parks and zoos and libraries and art galleries. And, and you know, this, this community is rich with cultural organizations and cultural destinations. And so while the question that you ask uh, about, you know, if we were initially formed as a museum and how has that changed over time and what does it mean now to be a science center, you know, the, the connotation of the word we've become more understanding of the essence of what Impression 5 was created to do has not really changed. The tactics we use to achieve that have changed based on meeting the community needs. But I think the, the standard within that is, you know, that people choose to go to these places for, for many different reasons. And so for us, it's now understanding that there's only so many folks in the community that may feel like a place like Impression 5 is for them or for their family. Um, you know, you, you may boil that even further down to having identity within STEM or having identity within a cultural organization that may be in the past had more barriers than we can understand. And so doing the important work of, of understanding what those barriers are you know, the only barrier, it's not just financial. That is definitely a specific barrier for some families, but sometimes the, the barriers exist in cultural barriers or transportation or, you know, other things that we need to really pay attention to, to make places like Impression 5 as accessible as possible. Um, and so as we look forward to what the next 50 years of Impression 5 bring, you know, we're still holistically focused on creating our own exhibits, creating an awesome experience that's focused or, or connected to STEM um, in a way that serves the mission of the Science Center. But we also understand kind of this greater responsibility of that accessible cultural organizations strengthen the community and bring pride to the community and bring um, access and accessibility and, and privilege, if you will, uh, to the community because the community has these assets. I know that's a long-winded answer, but I hope that makes sense. <laughs> that's okay. We're we're eating up time. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about creating um, experiences and um, go back into your past uh, and figuring out um, the situation uh, of joining Impression Five and uh, wanting to create these experiences for for kids. Has this always been a passion. Now, you did say that you volunteered at Impre I-5 at age 14. So this has been like pretty much your life. Yeah, this is, um, I quite often refer to this, you know, this isn't my job. This is my my life's work because I feel like it now at, at 47, soon to be 48, um, and having been here for close to 30 years that um, that it has been. You know, I, obviously, I've had other jobs um but this has been my career. Um, and it, no, I didn't purposefully, <laughs> you know, choose uh, to go down this career path. I, my initial experience with Impression 5 was, was visiting as a child. I uh, grew up here in the Lansing area. My, my mother was involved with the Junior League of Lansing who had adopted Impression 5 as a signature project in the late 60s. Uh, when I was born in 75, um, Impression 5 had been open for three years in a different location than we are now, um, but she started taking me there. And so I have very vivid memories of, of visiting exhibits at Impression 5 and feeling like that place was the coolest place ever. Fast forward 10 years or so, um, and my my <laughs> the impetus to me volunteering at Impression 5 is an interesting one because it actually was the result of me getting in a little bit of trouble. Oh. Um, my, my friend and I made some bad decisions with, uh, his parents' car. Um, and my mom made a decision that I clearly had too much free time on my hands and I was going to start volunteering in the community. And so she was involved in the science center and, um, and, and that's how it started. I came in volunteering as, as, uh, you know, helping out in the science center store, helping out with helping to clean the clean the facility, then that moved into supporting educational programs. Um, I graduated from Hazlitt High School, went on to study biology at Olivet College, um, 
with with really thinking that I wanted to go into the healthcare industry. And um, about my sophomore year in college, I started working full time at the Science Center as a, an exhibit area staffer. So I would help people use the exhibits. I would, you know, kind of a guest services role there also, but helping maintain things, that type of deal. And that I started to kind of fall in love with the place. Um, and as I continued my studies in science and all of that, there were lots of things that I was studying that were connecting to things that I was teaching in demonstrations at Impression 5. And so these, you know, my academic world and my real world started to converge and that intersection started to make a lot of sense to me. And so as I graduated college, um, I, I wrote a proposal to the leadership of Impression 5 to become the exhibit area supervisor. And that was my first real job out of college. And, and that job included me, you know, managing daily operations, scheduling staff, doing the things that, um, gosh, they seem so long ago now, but doing the things that there was like a, a level up of what I had done. Um, it did that for many years. Um, there was a leadership change in the Science Center and I became the director of education in that role. So I was creating educational programs, delivering educational programs. You have to, you have to understand at this time, the staff of Impression 5 was about 12 people. Um, mm. we're, we're now 40 people, um, much more robust offerings than we had back then. That is not a pat on my shoulder. I did not do all that work alone. There's amazing people that work here. Um, but that's kind of how I got started. And, and I remember a conversation I was having with my mother when I was still like a junior or senior or junior in college. I'm like, I still don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I want to be a fireman. I don't know if I want to go to med school. I don't know what I want to do. And, and I remember her telling me that I didn't need to know that that just pay attention and there'll be opportunities that present themselves and you can make choices about those things. And so at this point in time, I just feel incredibly fortunate that I've been able to be a part of this organization for this long um, and see the things that this group of people can make happen. And that's, uh, it's, I feel very, very fortunate. I feel very privileged to be able to have that opportunity. Um, and I don't take it lightly because I know a lot of people don't have that rewarding of a work experience. Well, I, I, it seems like it was going to be natural progression, seeing as you were talking about your your natural progression up through up through the ranks to eventually become the executive director. Now, when you when that happens, what were some of the things that you wanted to tackle? What was like, okay, I'm in this position. This is something that I've always wanted to do. What, what was that? So at the time of that transition, I was serving as education director. Um, the organization made a change, decided to make a change in leadership, and we're going to move into a search for the next executive director. Um, I reached out to members of the board of directors and said, you know, I don't really know what the plan is, um, but I would like a shot at this. Um, you know, I'd like you to consider naming me interim as exec executive director. Um, and I didn't necessarily have a plan <laughs> of what I, I wanted to achieve other than raising money. Um, we were in survival mode at that point. The Science Center, um, to be quite honest, was aging. Exhibit inventory was tired. Um, facility needed work. And so um, my, my focus was creating relationships that could help us achieve the next iteration of impression five, as you will, and if you will. And, and, and so that was my focus. I mean, obviously we were a small enough team at that point that you had to still do everything else, but I knew that if we weren't bringing money in the, in the organization from a contributed revenue standpoint, that we weren't going to survive. And so um, that was my, that was my focus. Once we started to get some traction there and we started to make some investments in things like new exhibits or making the facility more, um, more comfortable and more, more appealing. And we started to see some of those metrics trick up, like, you know, walk through attendance, those types of things. Then, then I realized that, that the next step was that we needed to create a real vision for where we were headed. Um, and so luckily I was, I was able to work very closely with my colleague, Mikaela Balzer. Um, and we, we created, um, 
you know, a standard for what the for what the future of Impression 5 would be. We refer to that now as Play Create Challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the filter that we use starting with the guest experience. How, what do we want to create that allows them to play with science, create new ideas with science, um, and challenge their understanding of science. And so once we started to do that work, which took years, to be honest with you, Paul, um, then we, we created that benchmark and we walked around the Science Center and realized that we didn't have a single thing that met that benchmark. Mm. And so the next challenge was, how do we replace all this? How do we do all this? And so, um, you know, pre-pandemic, we had worked for about 10 years to re completely replace, we were up to 90% of all the old exhibits at the Science Center had been revamped or new, the new created exhibits replaced them. Um, we're really starting to gain, gain ground. We're, we're at 170,000 visitors pre-pandemic and then bam, um, you know, the world turns itself up on, on its head. And so, you know, there's been a whole new segment of innovation through that just to meet that moment. And now we're, we're back to the point where we're creating the vision for what the next 5, 10, 15 years look at the Science Center. And it's, it's exciting. But yeah, it, it, it was, it, once again, it was one of those moments where the opportunity was there and the vision came after we seized the opportunity. It was not prior to that. You know, just talking with you in this this last twenty minutes, uh, the theme of not sitting on your butt seems to be coming <laughs> up over and over. It's like there's an opportunity to grab. I'm going to go grab it. That's that's amazing. Um, and so you became executive director when? So it would have been what 13, 14 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And. Um, over that time, seeing as you have like um, traveling exhibits as well as your own uh, in-house exhibits, what have been your favorites? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and, you know, one of the things that, that differentiates Impression 5 for being a relatively, we're a mid-sized museum if you compare us to everybody else or Science Center. Um, and most science centers our size have other people build their exhibits. And we made a really conscious decision that if we could create the team that could develop and fabricate our own exhibits, that those exhibits would be unique um, and they would be part of Impression 5's piece. And so the innovation of that is really my favorite. A couple of individual exhibits that I truly love. Um, if you, I love them all, but if you visit the science center, one of my favorite things to show off is the life-size light mosaic or light by light bright exhibit in our spectrum ex exhibit. And the reason I love that so much is not necessarily just because it's a big version of something we may have all played with, you know, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. but the this process that the exhibit team used to make that the best experience possible, it was so awesome. I mean, there are lots of places that have, little life brights or, or little light bright exhibits. And we visited those places and watched children interact with them. And most of them all had a few limiting factors. One, they were usually too small for more than one or two children to work at at a time. And they all used pre-colored acrylic pegs. And so we literally watched children sort the colors out, which is a valuable experience, by the way. Mm -hmm. But when they ran out of their favorite color, they would stop. And so they would go to something else. And so we're like, how do we, how do we remove some of these barriers? How do we remove some of these stopping points? And so the exhibit, here, the exhibit folks, you know, designed a, a light bright machine that has 4,000 pegs in it. It's, it's literally, you can have six or eight people working at it on the same time. And instead of pre-colored acrylic tubes, we use colorless acrylic tubes. And when you place the tube in the receiver, it sits on a color wheel and you can mix the colors together. So you can change the color in each one of those spots. Mm. And so that provided this amazing opportunity, not only for people that really wanted to dial in different colors in their design, but even for young children in the fine and gross motor skills of turning something that's in that peg being in that receiver or placing the peg in there. And so you've got this really kind of multi-generational experience. And, and that, that exhibit in itself, that one component, I think tells such a powerful story of the intentionality um, that our process takes place. And I'm not saying that we're the only ones that do that. Most people in these organizations do, but from an Impression 5 standpoint, 
that's definitely one of my favorite things from a collective holistic exhibit like the Tolo experience the two door the two story water room has got to be one of my favorites um that was the most aggressive exhibit project in, in my tenure here at the Science Center. It included building out a whole new gallery, welding these huge pools together, creating experiences with water in a space that could handle, you know, a thousand gallons of water. And so um, that's definitely been my fave. But, they, but all of them have a little piece for me because all of them symbolize the next step forward for the Science Center. Like what we learned in this process with this exhibit makes the next process stronger and the next exhibit stronger. Um, and, then, and then, of course, we supplement that with bringing in traveling shows from all over the country, things that people in Lansing would typically have to drive to different markets to see. We want to bring that stuff here so so people that live here and work here um, can be proud of their science center. Wow. So you've been at, at the helm here for over half the the lifespan of Impression 5. So, and you're celebrating 50 years this year, or this, yeah, something like that. What, what is the legacy that you want to leave? My first initial answer to that is long-term sustainability. Um, you know, I think that the Science Center, to be completely transparent, had been in survival mode for so long um, that, you know, if I were to tee this place up for whatever the leadership structure looks at next, um, you know, I want a culture here that embraces the team, that creates a safe environment for the team to do good work, where people feel valued um, and encouraged to do hard work, because this is not easy work. This is hard work and important work. Um, and I want a business model and a long-term sustainable funding model that makes it possible for us to continue to do this for another 50 years or, or so forth and so on. Um, I think those are the, the two big pieces. I think it's inherent that places like Impression 5 pay attention to their community, um, engage in the needs of the community and figure out how the mission of the Science Center or their respective organization can engage and help strengthen the community. And so I think there, there's many different filters that you can look through to determine success. You could, you could use just straight up metrics like how many people visit. Um, we tend, while we look at those metrics, we tend to really holistically focus on what is the quality of the experience um, and, and how are we building relationship, relationships in the community so, a youth, so youth feel empowered uh, to be engaged in their own learning process, because um, I think that gives us a much, a much deeper, uh, much deeper roots in the community than than just a fun place to go. And the last thing I usually end uh, the whole session with is because of the immense amount of work that you do and the immense amount of important work that you do. Um, and the fact that you run probably one of the funnest places in the in the greater Lansing area or mid Michigan, what do you do to escape? Oh gosh, um, I, I I'll first say that I I'm not very good at that. <laughs> um, you know, I obviously I, I have a I'm lucky to have a very wonderful family. Um, and, and that is definitely a, a, a point of respite for me um, as far as is escaping to try and, you know, clear my mind and reinvigorate myself so I can continue to do this work. Um, you know, that, that comes in different phases for me. Um, sometimes it's, it's listening to different podcasts that make me think about different things. Sometimes it's, it's reading. Um, sometimes it's engaging um, with somebody that I might consider a mentor that does completely different work than I do. Um, sometimes it's sitting on the beach with my toes in the water. Uh, it, all of it, there isn't one specific thing because I think that from my own workflow, there's a lot of seasonality to it. And um, there are certain times within that flow that I need different things throughout the year to, to make sure I'm taking care of myself. Um, but, and so it's a, it's a, it's a diverse set of things uh, that, that I try and engage in that help me stay focused on how important the work is, but how important it is to keep myself uh, capable of doing the work. 
since we're talking on a podcast, I have to ask, what podcast are you listening to? Or what, what, which one has caught your attention as of late? So, I, you know, this is very industry specific, um, but there is a wonderful podcast uh, created by a, a museum professional by the name of Colleen Dylan Schneider, who creates a podcast called uh, Cultural Data for Cultural Executives. And she hops into everything from, um, you know, metrics that are specific to cultural organizations, to leadership, to um, creating culture, to all, all kinds of different topics. And what I love best about that podcast specifically is how the information is delivered. Um, it's an energetic podcast. It, it's backed up with metrics. I like numbers. Um, I, there are things that I can understand in that, but it's also um, re, it's also encouraging. It's also, listen, the work you're doing is important. You need to keep doing this work. This is what it means in the community. Um, and so that one I've, I've definitely grasped onto as of late. Awesome. Well, if uh, somebody wants to learn more about Impression 5 and what you're, you are doing, what, what's the best uh, way to go about that for them? Well, they can always check out our website to get the information that's available there. But, you know, what I love is the one-on-one -on -one conversations with people about the Science Center, about its history, about where we're going, about, you know, what, what thoughts and ideas they have. And so if they want to set up a meeting with me, a coffee with me, a communication point with me, feel free to send me an email at larson at impression5.org. Or if you call the Science Center at 485-8116, I'm, I'm the voice that answers the phone and I'll give you my extension to find me right away. Great. Well, thanks for being on the, on the podcast. We really appreciate it. It was a great story. Great story. Paul, thanks for the work you do and inviting me on this. This, is, this has been awesome. Awesome. And thank you all for again taking some time out to listen to our program and don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple weeks and if there is someone that you know of and you want to hear about their journey please email me at missioncontrol at introduce.com and if this is your first time here please subscribe on youtube or your favorite podcasting platform and give us a positive review thank you again and we'll see you next time in the control center